Hello everyone, I'm Klaus Aranha from the University of Tsukuba. This is Experiment Designs in Computer Science, Topic 3, Statistical Inference. In this video, I want to address comments from the last video. Let's go. Okay, so last video, last week, we had a attendance survey. Thank you everyone for answering. I want to talk about some of the comments that I saw in the attendance survey and some comments from students that contacted me directly by email. Uh, first, I want to talk about the report. Many of you uh, asked me about the report. The report is due next week. Please don't forget. Um, about the length of the report, I think that between two and four pages is a readable, reasonable length for this kind of report. But if you need a little bit more or a little bit less, that is not a problem. Also, I recommend that you think about how you frame, how you think about your experiment. Many people ask me, is this experiment okay? Or is that experiment okay? And generally, the ideas for the experiments were really good. But it's not only the idea that it's important, but also how you think about the idea. So, for instance, many people proposed experiments that was like, is A or B better? I think that instead of thinking of the experiment is A or B better, you should think of your experiment as let's learn more about A and B. Because that will allow you to make many questions. To, it will increase your curiosity and it will make it a better experiment in general. So to give you a more uh, concrete example, let's say that your proposed experiment was do shirts dry faster inside the room or in the veranda. And that would be an okay experiment, but a better way to think about the same experiment would be, let's measure the speed that shirts dry in different places around the house. So it could be inside, it could be in the veranda, it could be in the toilet, it could be in the shower. And when you think about let's measure, you start to think about, okay, what are the characteristics that make the shirts dry faster or slower? Uh, which places have higher variation, which places have smaller variation, which places are the same, which places are different. So you're not limited on just saying, oh, this one is the best. No, you want to learn more about all of them. So think about how you want to frame uh, your experiment. Okay, now let's talk about the questions in the survey. The first question was, is one random uniform sample biased? Well, we had many answers. 15 people said it was biased. Uh, 24 people said it was unbiased. And five people gave a hedge answer, which means they wrote a lot, but they did not say if it was biased or unbiased. Come on, people, answer the question. Um, the correct answer is unbiased. This is because the error in this estimator is not systematic. In other words, the expected value of this estimator is the same as the true mean. Of course, there is an error, but this error can be above or below with equal probability. Okay, so let's see an example of yes answer. Yes, it would be biased with only a single sample. There is no way to assure the sample is within any deviation of the statistical mean, and it's not just an outlier. The justification is correct. But this justification does not mean it's biased. So many people hear the word biased and they think bad. Biased is bad. Biased is bad. And yes, biased is bad. But not everything that is bad is biased. If you have a very big error, it can still be unbiased. It will be a very big error, but it will be unbiased. So you need to know the difference. Okay? Example of no answer. It's an unbiased estimator. However, during due to the small sample space and the possibility of extended data situations, the error may be extremely large, which is correct. Okay? Uh, and what I was thinking about hedging. We need to perform many experiments to avoid error. The error will be very large. Yes, this is true, but this does not answer the question. So be very careful when you are answering the question that you are actually answering the question that is being asked. Uh, if you write a lot of things that are correct, but 
if it doesn't answer the question, then it doesn't matter. Okay, if you just said here, yes, it would be a better answer than this long answer. So think about what, think about the question, okay? Um, so basically, yes, uh, mathematically, biased is defined as the difference between the expected value of an estimator and the true value, okay? So it's not enough for an estimator to have error to be biased because all estimators have errors, all of them. Uh, the magnitude of the error is not related to bias. An estimator with a very small error could also be biased, and, and that's another thing that's true. Let's say that you have an estimator that the statistic is true mean plus one. Of course, it's impossible because you don't know the true mean, but let's say it was possible. If you have an estimator that is true mean plus one, the error is very small, but the estimator is biased because the expected value of the estimator is not equal to the true mean, okay? Now, why is it important? Why are we, we want to, why we, are we talking about bias? We're going to talk about this, this lecture, but bias, um, the statistics that we use to analyze the estimators, they require the estimator to be unbiased. If the estimator is biased, the statistics that we're going to talk about today do not work very well, okay? So the next question was the advantages of confidence interval in an experiment. And this one, most of the students uh, answer it correctly. And it's really that we can talk about uncertainty when we are using a confidence interval and we don't have information about uncertainty when we use a point estimator. That's the biggest uh, point. Okay, so this is a general answer. A confidence interval gives more information, the amount of uncertainty associated with the estimate. And this information can be further controlled by using the alpha parameter of the confidence interval. Some small mistakes that I saw, because by analyzing samples from the population, we cannot get the precise result of its average value. Um, both the point estimator and the interval estimator they use sample. So I'm not exactly sure what this, uh, this answer was trying to say. A point interval gives us the certainty of the interval containing the real value. Now, this is a big mistake because we are not certain of that the real value is inside of the interval. Okay? Uh, then a confidence interval gives the probability of a value to be inside of the statistical interval. Now, this is a smaller mistake, but it's still important. Um, the confidence interval does not calculate the probability of a value to be inside the interval. When I say 95% confidence, it's 95% that my calculation was correct. It's the, the, the confidence, it's about the calculation it's not a confidence about the position of the true value, okay? Now, I ask you if you prefer streams, MS streams or YouTube. Uh, 10 people prefer streams, 20 people prefer YouTube, 18 people said both. Uh, for YouTube, load fast was one of the main reasons. Another main reason was the user interface. And another main reason was the automatic translation. For streams, it's because it's the official uh, the, uh, official tool of the university. Now, some general comments. So I still have no idea what is good choice for my experiment. Um, I hope you had a chance to discover, but if you still have questions, please uh, don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, come tomorrow to the office hours to talk about your experiment. But anyway, a good choice for an experiment is something that is easy for you to do and is interesting for you to do, okay? Uh, I want parameter definition for equation in each slide. Uh, I will try to improve on that. Thank you for the suggestion. If it's not a computer-related experiment, what experiment materials need to be submitted? Uh, if your experiment is not in a computer, um, you need to gather data to write to calculate 
to calculate the, the confidence interval, right? So this data that you calculated, you put it in a CSV file and you send that, okay? Um, I wish the exams can be a little bit more friendly to overseas students. Uh, please let me know how do you think that the exam could be more convenient. I would like to help if possible. Uh, maybe we need more process about the formula derivative. Now, this is, this is a very good question. I could spend a lot of time derivating the formulas and a few years ago, I did that. And in my experience, if I spend a lot of time derivating these formulas, many students are not interested, especially when it's um, a like when it's a pre-recorded video. So the goal of the course is for you to understand the reason of the formulas, not necessarily the numbers. I think that if you really want to know the formula derivative, you can study that in a, in a textbook. Uh, what I want to talk, the limited time that we, we have, is what are the important parts of the formula. Of course, if you want to know more about the derivative, you can come to the office hours and we can talk about it. Okay. If you have any suggestions or any specific questions, I would be happy to talk about that. As a foreigner, sometimes I cannot accurately understand the definition of some concepts. What should I do? Uh, if you don't understand some concepts, use the forum to ask questions, okay? Because if you don't understand, there is a very high chance that other students don't understand too. So if you use the forum, I can answer your question and other, st other students can also learn from your question. By the way, there's a yo dog behind you. Yes, yo dog is my favorite meme. More coding examples with data. I will do my best to add. Maybe I will not add the code examples at the same time as the lecture, but I will try to add code examples later. Thank you very much for your clear PPT content. Thank you, uh, but it's not PowerPoint. Uh, so I'd like to ask a question that is nothing to do with the course. That's fine. I saw your hobbies include game programming. I also want to develop some games, and that, but I have little knowledge. Where do I begin? If you want to begin learning about game programming, my suggestion is to use a software called Pico8, which is a software that is very easy to learn and it contains everything that you need to make a game. I recommend that you start to make a very simple and classical game like Snakes or Breakout because then you can learn how to use the software making these very simple games. And then after that, you can start to be more creative with your own ideas. If you want to talk about this, again, come to the office hours. I would be happy to talk to you about that. Could you please give us more time to finish the survey? We have a lot of courses. Um, I understand, but I think this is a little bit hard because I need to use the survey to prepare these comments and I also need to use the survey to prepare the class materials. I need to know what you understand and what you don't understand. So I already give you like four days. So the class is on Friday. I usually release the materials on Friday morning and the survey is on uh, Monday afternoon. And this survey is not graded. So you don't really need to spend a lot of time on the survey. So let's see if we can find a better um, middle ground here. Okay, um, that those were all the questions for last week. Thank you very, thank you very much, everyone who submitted a comment, and I look forward to your comments for this week. Uh, see you in the next video when we are going to talk about statistical inference. See you there.